Hey, I'm Bob Watchall, um, geologist of uh, about uh, 50 years standing now, and uh, I first started in Tasmania in 1968, working in the tin mines uh, up at Ross Arden Stories Creek, and then uh, went to the School of Mines in Kalgoorlie uh, through to 72, worked for, with West Mining from 71 through to 99 and then was a consultant from 99 to pretty much now winding down. Uh, this talk today is on, uh, well I've called it underworld time travel because effectively we're not going to do any surface exploration at all, we're going to go underground. And the underground will be from about 600, uh, 60 to about 300 kilometres depth using seismic tomography. Uh, I, well, I don't think this is paradigm changing re research as uh, geologists amongst you will um, realise as we go through it. So put on your hard hats, uh, we're on a, a tight time schedule here. And we're going to examine the lithosphere under Australia, North America and uh, North China compare the lunar mares with those places, um, find out about the mineralisation in those places, and uh, I'll be presenting uh, new exploration targeting concepts, actually based on what you can see as opposed to theories uh, about what might happen in under the earth that uh, so far nobody's actually been able to show what I can show you today actually happens under the earth. Uh, the basis for, for the research is uh, seismic tomography, which although I've been doing this research uh, in enhancing and looking uh, for minerals for about 30, 40 years, I've only really used seismic tomography in the last year or so, and it's good stuff. So we'll be travelling from Australia, we're going to look at uh, the Yul uh, we'll look at Australia overall, then the Yulgarn, Pilbara, Mount Isa, Olympic Dam. We'll travel to North America. Um, we'll look at the Abitibi Belt, um, which was actually very surprising, and then across to North China to finish. A uh, sneak preview of uh, some of the uh, work that I've been doing. Um, people ask me to, can you have a look at the uh, area that I'm in? Um, so each of these uh, plans with all the big rings on it are, is actually the tomography of those continents at about 60 or so k down. So the current paradigm or way of thinking is that very few pre-4 billion year old rocks survive. Uh, mine is that huge areas survive under all the continents and they not only survive, they survive intact from four billion years ago. The uh, moon, uh, you can see very similar um, structure, so I'll go into that a little bit more. So geology of Australia and its correlation to the rings. So the small areas of brown there, the Archean. Uh, Effectively, you'd say, well, you know, if, if you only look at the crust, you'd say that the, there is very little uh, old rock left. And uh, I would bet that 80% uh, of geologists uh, don't know anything about the lithosphere. They would be like me one year ago, yeah, 49 years experience, and I had to be told what the lithosphere was. So the lithosphere is actually the up to three or four hundred kilometres of solid rock that sits under every continent. Uh, the geology and the rings that are underneath, so the rings are un that are underneath are basically un undeformed, they overlap, so they form concurrently. Um, the crust is uh, what they call accreted, so they say, and, and it is, it's, it's uh, started in the west and accreted younger and younger and younger as you go to the east. And that's only the top 50 um, kilometres or so. Uh, tomography, seismic tomography, the definition it resolves uh, lithological parameters, in particular the uh, 
short uh, wave, um, seismic waves, uh, by comparing the, uh, the waves in various areas. So the actual uh, slow waves, uh, uh, wet rocks, uh, like sediments and uh, lavas that come up under the water, and the uh, fast stuff is, is uh, igneous rocks. These are the actual, um, this is the data that I've used uh, to look at Australia from 75 to 300 kilometres and uh, two sections, in fact uh, three sections I used. It does open up a whole new world of geology and uh, because it's opening up geology you're opening up exploration opportunities if you look at it right. So you go from uh, this, that's, uh, I'm not saying that's as good as uh, most scientists get of Australia, but they really can't get lo uh, more, less than about 50 to 100 kilometre resolution on these structures. I can get them down to um, five kilometres. I can just keep enlarging and enlarging this stuff until I can get right down to um, five kilometres, I, I can look at all the structures as they go up through the Yulgarn. Uh, you can also see strong tectonic zones uh, running through, effectively um, suggesting, well not suggesting, telling us that uh, this, this uh, lithosphere under Australia is actually still uh, in situ and it's also undeformed hasn't all been messed up. Uh, there is no plastic mantle under Australia until you get down to four or five hundred kilometres down. Unlike what most people think, they think 60 kilometre crust, moho, plastic mantle, uh, it's rubbish. Um, the actual cross section here is cross section 20 degrees south and uh, the tomography there if you uh, look at that closely, effectively there isn't any accretion or sliding over of blocks. Uh, it's effectively one big block from side to side. That's pretty much the, um, to scale. The crust would just show up as a tiny little thin line at that scale. This is a um, the rings there are the uh, rings that I can see uh, and I'll, I'll, we'll be going through this in more detail in the uh, Yulgarn and uh, the Pilbara up at Mount Isa and down in the Gaul of Cratton in South Australia. The thing to notice and I've noticed it in uh, North America and on at China as well that the, the, uh, the biggest um, ring structures uh, very, very similar to the ones on the moon, or the one that you can see on the moon in particular, uh, down to the point where the centre of it is actually filled with younger rocks. Uh, on the moon, it's, uh, the actual structure uh, happened at about four billion years ago, but the actual infilling lavas um, are right down to one billion years ago. So the moon is tectonically active for... Uh, three billion years after, um, after the uh, impacts that caused uh, the big craters there. And so Earth is the same. And like the Moon, uh, which it's been uh, rigid, and you can still see the round circles on Earth, the actual impacts uh, solidify the actual crust instead of the other way around. The or solidify the lithosphere. The actual lithosphere gives off more heat than the impact has uh, imparted as kin kinetic energy and therefore it's uh, going to uh, cool it. And that's the reason why uh, the lithosphere has, uh, is so deep and so um, uh, rigid. This is uh, another 75 kilometres down, 150 kilometres deep. Uh, so I've given a sort of a, an arbitrary, but it's not really arbitrary, um, uh, time frame for the each level. So corals grow at about, uh, so if people say, well, you know, you're trying to tell me that uh, Earth's 
uh, Earth during uh, impacts has actually had a 300 kilometer skin of lavas put around it. Uh, that sounds a bit too much. Well, 300 kilometers of lava over 300 million years is actually equates to one millimeter a year. So I'd say that uh, we're looking at uh, a lot more than 300 and a lot's been eroded off. In this particular um, slide, the, um, there's three different types of ring structures. A big one up here which surrounds this here, this uh, centre here, which is a very woolly looking structure, uh, very um, digested. Uh, the second impact or giant ring structure is, has got an intermediate looking texture and the latest ones have got a very brittle looking texture with uh, the same uh, northeast and west northwest uh, structure. From that, uh, I'm uh, saying that uh, uh, all these impacts actually happened during the late heavy bombardment, which went from 4.1, 4.2 to 3.8 billion years ago. So I'm just allocating uh, 100 uh, kilometres depth with, um, or 50 kilometres depth with. Uh, uh, 50 um, million years and so therefore I'll get my my time frame for each each level I'm looking at that's just a, a sketch of the the different craters I really haven't got time to you know, explain it in great detail um, otherwise we'll just run miles over time but effectively that that's the situation so I've got two methods of enhancing the data. One is a um, structural method and the other one's domainal method. This is the domainal one, so you, you're highlighting d areas of different domains. And the structural one is where you're just looking at all the detailed structure. And uh, that's with about uh, nine-tenths of the stages left off. This is uh, the way I enhance it. I go from that, enhance it a bit, you'll see a little bit of structure there. Uh, go down, you'll see a little bit more structure and then you go down to that and you end up with this after about 20 or 30 iterations. It's a bit of an art doing it. I've actually sent the methodology out uh, to lots of geologists and a few say that they've actually managed to crack it and they're, they're delighted and others say, it's just so frustrating. <laughs> How did you ever... Um, have the patience to do it. Uh, this is the same 150 kilometre depth uh, showing the... Uh, I'm actually going to uh, break with uh, tradition and call them impacts because I'm absolutely certain that they're impacts and not uh, just giant ring structures. I know I'll cop a heap from uh, purists but uh, you've got to be a little bit uh, sure of your convictions. And the reason I'm sure that they are impacts is that the, uh, the plan morphology is exactly like an impact. It's got a high centre and a series of rings around them. Uh, the sectional morphology, uh, so that, that Y there is actually of this impact here. And uh, the actual, so you've got a set of rings there and when you see it in section you've got a, a set of arcs that face downwards. If you look at that, you've got a series of bowls that face downwards. And that's the same on the, uh, the big one in the middle. The arcs actually face downwards. Uh, the actual core of the impact is above this level. And uh, so looking from the other side, you've actually, uh, Y is over here, exactly the same. So total consistency in results um, in plan and section. And it does suggest that the uh, geological processes are, are acting downwards, which, well, there's only really one methodology of uh, forming these structures, and it's not by plumes coming upwards or diapirs or dikes or stocks, particularly as they're over a thousand kilometres in diameter. They are impacts. Uh, now we go down um, 100, another 150 kilometres. 
So I've done them on about every 75 kilometres I've missed a couple out due to time constraints. So we're now down probably near the base of the lithosphere, although for all I know the uh, it could have still gone another 300 kilometres down because the structures and things are still like really rigid at this level. Um, there are rigid structures running everywhere, which we'll see as we hone in on each uh, each uh, area, the Yulgarn, the Pilbara and Mount Isa and that. So if you actually read that, I'll, I won't say it because, uh, but the the last bit, the late deformation, the, the boundary between uh, the upwelling mantle and the remaining um, impact structures is actually the locus of where mineralisation is, which you would expect because that's going to be the tectonically most active zone. Uh, that's the uh, same thing again. I'll just... Uh, I suppose the, uh, just as an example of how you can see them, there's that one there, if I oscillate backwards and forwards, I don't know how it's coming out on that, but uh, you can sort of see the shadow of a ring, and that actual ring, uh, that shows up through a lot of levels. Now, some of the rings, structures, they go right from the surface right to the bottom, and the ones that go right to the surface, obviously, are the latest rings uh, because they, they happened at the end. But even those ones are actually... Um, uh, they're actually big, and, the, and the, even those ones go clear through 300 uh, kilometres down, really, without actually changing any... They don't seem to change diameter. When you hear about... Uh, craters and things and you know most people will try and fit a, a bit a 300 kilometer or 200 kilometer diameter crater like uh, Chicxulub in America, Sudbury and um, Breeder Fort in South Africa they try and see all of the crater in the 60 kilometer deep crust well that's just nonsense because craters just don't work that way you've actually got to look into the lithosphere. So this is uh, how I believe the genesis of Australia, or the genesis of the lithosphere under Australia is formed. So if you go from the sur surface, actually the surface actually shows quite a lot of those rings, particularly in the older rocks, down to 175, 150, um, 225, 250 and 300. You actually see those huge rings down near the bottom, which don't appear to get up to the top. I believe they're the first um, late heavy bombardment impacts that actually formed the original um, lithosphere and then the rest just pile on top um, and get built up through uh, lava. Like, uh, like what you see in the mares on the moon, um, exactly the same process. And the moon has got layer upon layer upon layer of mares as well. The ones that you see on the top there are just the last ones. They've got about three that they know of that they can actually see. So I plotted up a bit of structural geology, if that be the right word, from the top to the bottom. And as I said, the footprints don't change from the top to the bottom of these large impacts. And uh, so while 300 kilometres might seem quite deep, that's actually the thickness of it across the width of Australia and the impacts, are, it's just going straight down. Um, I guess this leads to comparisons with the moon. Uh, the moon, that's Australia at uh, 200 kilometres depth. Probably should have used that one at 150. It's much more, much more like what the moon looks like. Um, so the uh, pattern is very similar, the density, the uh, ring structures are very similar. Uh, that, that's a big ring structure, that one, that one set, in, set on A. And so I'm uh, definitely saying that the uh, lunar mares, well, we know the lunar mares formed during the late heavy bombardment 
Uh, and I'm saying, well, Australian uh, lithosphere formed at the same time. There's only one time in the whole uh, history of the inner solar system that this happened, and that's uh, 4.1 to 3.8 billion years ago. No time before and no time after has there been conditions that will give you that, uh, these huge, great big impacts. Uh, that's a comparison between uh, the moon here, pretty much uh, as you see it on the night sky. That's uh, using structural enhancement. You can see lots and lots of structures on the moon um, and uh, various layers of um, uh, circles, uh, which are the uh, craters that have been infilled with lava. This is the uh, Pilbara up here. It's a, a strong, uh, a very strong ring up in the Pilbara. And uh, down in the Yulgarn, they're, they're strong, but they're much uh, less obvious. There's the centre of a major one there, and then running around there. And another one sitting in there. If you draw them, draw up the rings and draw up the, uh, the linear structures, uh, they're very similar pattern, as you'd expect them to be, because they're... Um, both rigid bodies at that time getting impacted. Uh, by proportion, the Moon, you know, is a third the diameter of Earth, um, but Earth's got uh, what, five or six times the gravity of the Moon, so the uh, impacts are going to happen, uh, are going to hit twice as hard. So the result is probably uh, the fact that uh, they will look very similar. And to me, they look uh, almost identical in structure. I will now uh, come down to the Yulgarn Craton and uh, we're that's the, uh, oops, that was, it is an enlargement of the, the uh, previous slide where I, I showed the rings. Uh, that's the, the moon up here, so there's a, uh, an imp a big impact there, then a lot of little ones, and there's, there's bigger impacts that you can see in behind. The thing is, they're all circular on the Moon. There aren't any impacts that are not circular, unless they've come in at a glancing angle. On Earth, uh, there's lots and lots, there's circular ones, and there's uh, lots of ones that are weird shapes. And I'm supposing that uh, the, these uh, later impacts that have um, uh, that are the big circular ones have come in and hit a um, lithosphere that's actually um, is not rigid at that point, and so the earlier impacts are are, are getting uh, tectonic movement. I won't go through Boyle's second law of conservation of energy again. Needless to say, it's just like the lithosphere is the spray can, and when you spray off energy out of the spray can, the spray can gets cold. And that's, that's how the lithosphere solidified. Um, Cross-section through uh, from Mount Magnet, oops, Mount Magnet through to uh, Gruyere, our past Gruyere. Is, um, so the top one's a plan with the rings drawn on it and uh, the middle, middle is the the uh, seismic sections, you can absolutely definitely see that the uh, crust is, uh, is segmented and uh, ramped up, which is the uh, accreted way that the crust has formed. But the uh, lithosphere underneath, while it still does have ramps, uh, there's many structures that just go straight through. And uh, you can also see the um, not quite so well on this one, but on some of the later ones, you can see the big bowl-shaped structures that sit in there, going right to the bottom. Uh, getting to the more interesting part for economic geologists, uh, these mines that are plotted on there, they're actu the actual positions on the surface of the the main mines, I've just drawn the main mines onto the, 
onto the 75 kilometre depth tomography. So this has been enlarged again, but you're still not losing any resolution of your structures. I can enlarge that right up to uh, round Leonora. I can enlarge that little ring that sits there right up and you can still see other structures coming up from underneath. Um, on this particular um, plan, uh, the mines are located uh, on the uh, linear structures. That's uh, sort of like Raventhorpe, Southern Cross, and while well, you'd end up th going through Kirkalocka and uh, Mount Magnet and up through there. This one's Golden, Golden Grove, uh, Mount Gibson. You've, you've got them running across this way, um, Tropicana, and you run up that way. If you look at the more detailed mines, where you, when you've got a lot of them, you can actually see that there's about three or four linear directions that the mines sit on. They also sit on like, and I mean exactly on the, ring, the big ring structures. They run right around there, they run right around there. I've been reporting on the, or writing papers on these ring structures for a few years now um, to, uh, might say, uh, deafening silence. <laughs> uh, but it's been good fun. So, the, uh, that mineralisation is uh, three billion years old. So, presuming that the actual, actual uh, these structures, ring structures, actually happened uh, before 3.8 billion years, which they did because the only thing that can uh, do them is the uh, late heavy bombardment. Then these mines are sort of 800 million years afterwards, suggesting lots and lots of ongoing movement. This is the uh, most important um, diagram showing the, uh, the same uh, seismic section enlarged a bit and with the uh, structures coming right up from the bottom, uh, well, vertical structures com cutting right through all the other ring structures. And uh, lo and behold, the, the main ones actually do line up. There's a zone between there and about there that when you look at it without all this stuff on it is actually a lot darker, actually, sorry, between about there and there. And that's the main mineralised belt through the uh, Yulgarn. And the actual, when you look at the, um, the, the crust, uh, you can see uh, fan or flower type structures at the top of these uh, big structures un uh, going down to 300k. And all of those sit under the main mines and all of them sit under antiforms in the uh, top of the crust. And uh, there's antiforms. So there's Laverton, there's the next big discovery, there's the next big one, and there's the next big one. There's Gruyere, which has just been discovered. Lots and lots of them. Um, no reason why that uh, flower structure is any worse than the one under Laverton. So it gives us a good idea of where to look as flower structures are not anywhere near as well developed in the Murchison, but they're there. Uh, this is a section looking across from uh, Golden Grove across through Waluna. And the reason for showing this one is that uh, it's a basically, it's a three-way verification of my method of data enhancement. So we've actually got the uh, north-south Norseman Waluna line coming up through here. Well, not quite north-south, but nearly. And that uh, runs straight into a, a, a very large, well, the biggest vertical, um, uh, I'd say, fluid channel. Everywhere that I've seen these dark uh, valleys, they're fluid channels. So you've got the one there, you've got another one there, running up that uh, sandstone line. Another one over here, running up the Golden Grove line. Another one there. And uh, I think if you look at all of them, they all correlate with uh, major structures that are coming through. So a big major broken structure running up through there, you've got a big major broken structure 
it's extending down 300 kilometres. Uh, this slide's basically the, the other um, concept of uh, come across while I've been looking at this is that there's uh, like some of the, these ring structures or impacts of like they're the only source of a particular metal in all of the organ. So this uh, all of the uranium, primary uranium anyway, if you call Ulyri primary because it comes off a of granite that's right there, they all all sit in the Barambi um, giant ring structure. So I'm basically saying that. Uh, the gold and uranium and vanadium, all of the vanadium, all of the big vanadium deposits in WA sit there. Uh, that these particular impacts, particular impacts have particular metal characteristics. And we know that the uh, meteors do, uh, they do, they're all different, they've come from different uh, parts of that supposedly Mars sized proto planet that. Uh, Jupiter exploded on its journey into the inner system during the late heavy bombardment and uh, it's going to have the same characteristics as if you blew up Mars these days. If we go down to 300 kilometres in the Yorgan, big, big um, brittle structures all over the place and all these funny looking white blobs all over the place. Uh, those funny looking white blobs are actually what all the mines sit on. Nearly every single decent mine that's sitting 300 kilometres above this particular spot sit on these uh, white blobs that sit on the brittle structures down at 300 kilometres. Norseman, Kalgoorlie, Menzies, uh, it gets a bit airy fairy up through there, but they, my, the mines still sit, well, apart from Waluna, which sits on a black one, haven't figured that out yet. So that, those uh, white patches down there absolutely definitely have got something to do with mineralisation. Well, they are the source of the mineralisation on the sur surface if you believe in uh, the power of coincidence. They're no, they're no coincidence. The other thing is that the the, uh, as we could see on the surf, the other one, uh, the change between the brown upwelling mantle and the remaining uh, giant ring structures, actually where other, uh, I'm talking about major mines, sit on. Uh, Tropicana, Gruyere, uh, all around that area, that particularly where you've got white blobs, they should be very prospective like Ruer is and Tropicana is. Uh, so carrying that forward in terms of exploration targeting, um, the, the rings, uh, the brown areas and the white uh, areas under the mines, they make, uh, they're, the, they're the target areas. So if you carry that through to the surface, uh, that, that is actually the, um, uh, an enhanced landsat showing a uh, large ring structure and uh, these are the areas that I oh, would be out there targeting right now if I had the money. Uh, so up to the Pilbara, I'll go very quickly through these, I think I might be running out of time. Uh, so Hopefully there's none of you out there that can't see this ring structure here. Which I often find that uh, the smaller you make these things, the, uh, the clearer they are to see. And so that, that's that one made small Kundawana uh, ring structure. That's an Aboriginal community that sits right in the middle of it. The same thing applies if you look, look on the uh, seismic section, 20 degrees south seismic section, you can see the dark vertical uh, fluid pathways, not quite so good out on the edge, but uh, one sitting out near Telfer aren't too bad. And uh, the ones up through the centre here are actually pretty strong. But this is a long way off the centre of this uh, ring structure. Uh, 
all of the banded iron formation mines, uh, irrespective of how they got there, um, uh, they all sit within uh, all sit within that uh, ring structure. Like I'm talking about, all of those banded iron formations sit right within that wet ring structure. A lot of discussion on how did banded irons form. Uh, well, I'm taking a fair guess that uh, very strong iron rich. Uh, solutions have come up from this big ring structure, which actually goes right down to 300 kilometres. And that's the iron source for the uh, banded iron formation on top. Go down to 300k depth, the Kunawana uh, impact has totally disappeared, but you've got this almighty great big one that sits down there. around there and uh, probably easier to see on the smaller. Um, so that's an example of probably the uh, original craton forming late heavier bombardment impact. You also can see this uh, north-south zone, that's a continuation of the Norseman Waluna uh, belt and it's also the one that we could see on, on the 75. Uh, that's the, the mines. Uh, other thing of interest was the, uh, in America, in the um, uh, Carlin trend, uh, you've got uh, the mines uh, are on a, a dome and basin. They form on the, uh, the domes uh, and this area under the, under the uh, iron ore mines looks for all the world like what I've been able to pull up of the Carlin trend dome and basin structure, as does um, Telfer. Telfer looks like a dome and basin structure as well. Well, we know Telfer's on a dome. So those domes probably originated a long, long way down. Uh, same thing, it's, uh, that's your target areas. And that's the target areas on the surface. That particular ring that you can see in the Landsat, uh, that inner one correlates exactly pretty much with the Coon to Wanda uh, impact down at 75k. Uh, Mount Isa, um, this is an uh, enhanced Landsat. So there's a ring structure there, relatively well defined over about half of it. There are the mines. So the mines all around Mount Isa, that's uh, Mary Kathleen, that's Mount Isa, and then there's a ring. These are the only, only the ones that are getting mined at the moment, and, and they're the biggest ones that are in that area. And they basically form a ring inside that ring. Um, copper, uranium, um, silver lead, zinc. And that's uh, the same thing. Surface Landsat's the white one, the uh, yellow ring is the, uh, well, I didn't put a blank one up because I'm out of time, but effectively that's a, a ring. And then the, the inner ring actually looks like a thumbprint that sits in there. And these mines sit right around the edge of it. MacArthur River, Century, they sit on this big ring that runs there. Um, as you go down to 150k, um, the ring now has disappeared, it's uh, bottomed out and you've got a ring off to the east and the big rings that we saw on the uh, Australia wide one sitting out to the west and then two rings. But Everywhere where you've got the rings and, and the linear structures, where they all meet and they're the most complicated, that's where you've actually got the mines simply because uh, there's a fluid pathway that runs straight through. Uh, that's down 300k again, so it's actually the same thing. You've got white blobs, uh, mines, even the ones, the outliers uh, seem to sit on them. Uh, Mount Isa on that one and these mines on others. And that once again, that's the targeting that I would use in the Mount Isa belt, like uh, they took me a quarter of an hour to do. <laughs> not, not rocket science really, but uh, 
Uh, it could be billions and billions of dollars worth of uh, material in there. And the gall of Creighton, uh, the Proterozoic uh, just doesn't come out as well on, on um, tomography. But still, um, Olympic Dam definitely sits on a, on a ring. Um, Broken Hill on a half-baked ring, uh, but definitely on a lot of um, linear structures. Uh, mantle uh, intrusion coming up, three of them there. Uh, the, once again, the mines sit around the outside edge of them. Broken Hill sits on a very strong north-south liniment and right between two. Uh, the, these, mine, these mines out here, um, a Prominent Hill, one of that one I think, and the other one of uh, Resolute out further. Uh, they sit on the boundary, on the white structures, and also on the boundary of the, uh, the brown and the grey. Like, it's just so consistent it can't be, uh, can't be a fluke. So that's the um, targeting that I would use there. Also, maybe a half-baked uh, diamond basin sequence there, right north of Broken Hill. Should be up uh, Tipperborough way somewhere. Got a mate who's got a show up at Tipperborough. He might be interested in that. Uh, North American craton. So we'll go up uh, up there now. This one here. Uh, this is a sort of a half baked. Uh, I really didn't take much time over it. I should have uh, taken more time over it. But there are a lot of ring structures showing in the tomography on North America. Um, and I've given them all names, uh, which is mainly the state that they occurred in. And I've uh, also had a closer look at the Abitibi belt, mainly because I've been very interested in the Abitibi belt because it's just such a rich, small belt. Why, why does it occur and why does it occur east-west? Uh, well, we know that it occurs east-west because running along the Cadillac decks to break. Um, I got interested in it. Oh, the other thing is that uh, once again, North American surface geology is all accreted geology, north-south. Nothing like what you see down in the lithosphere. So this is the Abitibi belt. Yeah, the first lot of people that have uh, seen this representation of the Abitibi belt. Um, absolutely, definitely big ring structures there. I got interested in it because I saw ring structures in gravity back uh, 10 years or more ago. Thought, oh, I'll put that off to one side and when I get round to it, I'll have a look at the Abitibi belt. Um, so in terms of ring structures, there's a, ring st a little ring structure in there, a, a bigger one there, a uh, bigger ring of it around there. Another ring structure there. Uh, they get a bit fuzzy and your eyes go a bit weird. And another one there. The trouble is you can't get all of, you can't get all the information to show up on one slide. So I've actually picked an intermediate slide here which shows this particular ring structure uh, in a bit more, well, perhaps a little bit more believably. The other, other thing I do to uh, convince myself perhaps that they're not just artefacts of my imagination or my mother's face as the uh, sceptics would uh, tell you you're looking at um, is uh, I'll, I'll do a, a, a mirror image of it and uh, if something like an owl's face pops out at me I know that it's a ring. If something like a chevron or whatever pops out at me I know that it's uh, just linear structures. And I think a, very definitely an owl's face popped out at me there. Apart from the fact that uh, it shows up in the gravity near the surface. The interesting thing about the, uh, well, about the Sudbury mine too, which is supposed to be a late, a late uh, 2000-ish million, uh, million years ago thing, actually lies on, on this almighty great ring that sits <coughs> around there. The uh, Sudbury sits like Mount Isa in particular and, and like Kalgoorlie and that sits right in between a whole series of rings. 
and it's sitting on a nor-nor-west structure and an east-west structure and a lot of rings and that's absolutely the uh, structural geology of Kalgoorlie. Um, and so, um, that oh, well, I'll enhance the actual ring structures that are under Abitibi, so I'll enhance them. And uh, yeah, at uh, what's 100k down, like Kalgoorlie, like the Yorgan, like all of the other um, fields that I've looked at, the uh, plumbing system's obviously absolutely dead vertical because the, the mines are sitting right on the big structures. Like I'd be, I'd be very surprised if they sat off over here because they haven't so far. Like totally consistent information. That's not a small field, the Abitibi, 170 million ounces and, and counting and lots and lots of copper, silver, lead, zinc. Hemlo's uh, another big mine that was found later. It sits on structures. I mean, uh, you can do the same exercise with, and I haven't yet, but I will, with uh, the Abitibi belt from 300k up to the surface. And I'll bet you that it's the same system because the whole lithosphere formed at the same time and it's going to have the same uh, mineralizing systems over all of Earth. Uh, there's no reason why one area should be different from the other. Uh, we'll go across to China. Um, once again, the surface geology has got nothing to do with the big ring structures that sit underneath. Uh, that uh, it's uh, the Chinese, uh, the North China Craton, looks like the bottom of it's actually been, well, I've seen written that the bottom of it's actually uh, been wiped off, but the bottom of it hasn't been wiped off, it's just been in situ replaced by the mantle because this big ring structure goes right down to 300k, exactly looking the same as that, but at that point it's in supposedly in the mantle. So that's the ring structure, which looks for all the world like that moon one that uh, I showed way back with the blue and the different colour, different ages. So that's the the old, the original ring and the later lavas, which is this uh, browner colour, actually fill the annulus of the ring. And that's the mines around that particular ring. And I haven't included it here, but the, these, these concentrations of mines here and here and here are where there's brown coming up from underneath at 300 kilometres depth. And where the brown doesn't come up from underneath at 300 kilometres of depth, you don't get any of the gold mines. Uh, so a summary of the genesis of the lithosphere in all of the places I've seen is that it's uh, formed between 4.2 and 3.8 uh, billion years ago during the late heavy bombardment. A bit of a sketch of uh, how it formed, as I showed on the more detailed one impact, lots and lots of lava coming out and making mares in the craters. So these would have all been mares at some point, hence the uh, very strong brittle structures in them. And then uh, after that from 3.8, which is roughly the oldest crust, um, there's older little bits, but there's a lot of 3.8, right through to the present day, it's uh, basically the little thin crust has formed on top and it is little and thin. Um, and the only thing I'll focus on here is the way that the um, these cratons have actually been preserved is that the uh, continuous strong isostatic pressures pushes the, they actually end up a lot lighter because all the heavy rocks have uh, uh, been um, uh, extruded as lava and then been eroded off and so uh, that's all gone off to the side and the isostatic pressure is pushing the uh, um, cratons up. Uh, takeaways of the talk, uh, giant ring structures exist from the surface to at least 300k. Um, all the uh, lithospheres I've seen so far have been absolutely continuous. And they form between the, uh, in the late heavy bombardment being absolutely the only thing that could have created uh, th those uh, huge big structures. 
And the most important thing is the, uh, the mineralising systems. So superheated fluids, which probably closer to 3,000 degrees centigrade at 300 kilometres depth, they come down and they're only 20 degrees at the top. So you're going to uh, scavenge minerals on the way up and they'll deposit them on the, um, wherever they find a likely uh, rock or structure. So um, I would guess that uh, if we could just work our way down all these structures, we'd just find deposits the whole way, which is why you get deposits in all ages on Earth. And uh, the other thing is that uh, specific metals are related to very definitely related to spe specific impacts or giant ring structures. Thank you for your attention.